ABS braking is arguably one of the biggest innovations in mountain biking since suspension or indeed disc braking itself. But whilst we know that there is definitely a performance advantage over traditional braking, what's not explored is where exactly would riders benefit from this new technology. One of the great beauties of EMTB is adventure style riding, unknown ridges, hidden valleys, but with that comes the added difficulty, or maybe added charm, of riding blind, venturing onto unknown trails, riding trails you've never tackled before, and therefore without the foresight of line choice and braking points. I fully believe then that it's in these places where ABS comes into its own. So it's against a backdrop of the Grand Jurasses, Grand Comban and Mont Blanc, and with a descent of over 8,000 feet, that we will be exploring some of the scenarios where ABS really does shine. Okay, now we've just dropped in off the summit and I think one of the first strengths of ABS is going to be on extended descending. So I don't know about you guys, but I do tend to sort of drag the rear brake quite a lot, especially if the, if the terrain is steep, if it goes on for like 15, 20 minutes, half an hour. So with ABS, because you're going to be relying more on the front brake, it's going to it's gonna move your, your weight for the forward and the bike, so it's gonna be less stress on the rear brake. So it's distributing the braking forces, you know, front and rear, a little bit more than with a traditional setup. I'm descending down this hill now, so I'm gonna see if there's gonna be any brake fade um, on the front or the back. Uh, there's gonna be other situations I'm gonna be thinking about, such as when you're rolling into sections with this loose rocky ground, and I think that's gonna be uh, quite a good strength of ABS. So uh, we'll continue descending and we'll go into sort of the, the pros and cons of, of ABS versus non-ABS as we descend. <laughs> Soon we come across a classic section of track that simply falls off the earth. An incredible piece of terrain, a beautiful glacial feature, but still perilous when tired. Which got me thinking that when you get fatigued, you make more mistakes. And after say a 10 to 20 minutes of constant descending, ABS simply takes the guesswork out of braking and nearly always makes the smarter decisions for you. Whoa, look at this trail. Oh my god, it's unreal. It's actually unreal. Right, it's like ridge line. I've never. Oh, it is absolutely stunning. Wow. Mountain just opens up. So here's the situation, you come into a technical rocky section and there's a stone on the track which all of a sudden you dab your front brake and it, all of a sudden it's stuck to your front tyre like a leech. Now what happens then, it tends to, your, your, your momentum, your, your, sort of, your direction is actually dictated by where the stone wants to go to and not where your front wheel should be going. The great thing with ABS, it doesn't get involved with stuff like that. It simply rolls through the rock. It keeps, the tire keeps turning as you're going over the loose stuff. So you can actually keep your line choice far better with that ABS. Just then, uh, a long downhill section, you're coming into one of many corners and what tends to happen is you're an anchoring on the brakes really heavily on a, on a standard uh, brake bike. And what you tend to do is maybe lean over the back a fraction and what happens in that situation, you actually lose a bit of traction on the front tire. Whereas with ABS, you can come into the corner, you can anchor up really late, but you can actually keep a central position on the bike. So that means you can more grip on the front tire and therefore you can actually sort of do that corner a lot more effectively. Whoa, it's this dusty, loose, powdery terrain where I love the way that the ABS keeps you rolling. If you're trucking through this ground, otherwise you're gonna be slipping on the front tire all the time. The dear old switchback. How many times have you seen people lying in the ditch outside of the corner simply because they've grabbed too much brake, too much front brake in a loose hairpin corner? Well, on ABS, that front wheel, 
just keeps on turning. Okay, coming hot into a corner, a horrible fire road. Watch out, my front wheel doesn't break traction. Stay in the middle of the bike. Boom. This is very positive. Is there any negatives to ABS? I think that there's going to be a percentage of racers who live in a controlled, calculated world of downhill racing where they know every single root and rock on the track, they know every single brake in part, they don't actually use the brakes that often. I'm not sure those guys will be tuned into this system just yet. M maybe, maybe. I'd, I'd really like to, to see what's going to happen uh, in the years ahead. Okay guys, so ABS. 100% great for adventure, and I mentioned a minute ago that uh, I'm not sure that uh, ABS break-in in the controlled, calculated world of downhill racing, it is the place, but I might be wrong. But here we are, we've stumbled across a World Cup-style downhill track. Um, and regardless of the break-in, what we have here is loose stones in amongst dust, in amongst big boulders on a gradient, so, um, this is a place where it's highly likely that you lose traction on your front wheel and um, in a place like this, it's not actually ideal. So uh, let's give it a go. One of the things I've been thinking whilst I've been descending is how many bikes have got suspension designs which have been designed to remove the effect of braking, where you know the, 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 the suspension still keeps working. I think there's some unexplored territory there which I need to get my head around over the next few days. So to conclude, I think the proof is actually in my rear disc. There is no scorched sort of oil slick effect uh, on my rear disc. That proves that a lot more braking has been going on on the front than possibly you would in a normal situation. I think, as I mentioned, I think in an adventure environment, ABS is great. Hope I've given you some scenarios where I think it's, it's strong at. Remember, what we've done is actually a summer ABS sort of comparison. So um, what might happen in the winter, I'm looking forward to, to following up in those dark, wet months in the north of Wales on some, uh, on some sludge and some slippery rock. So um, thanks for watching, folks. If you've not seen our ABS versus analog with my colleague, Matt Davis, behind the camera, please check that out. It's, uh, well, it wasn't fun, but it's interesting, I have to say that. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.